Good evening from Xfinity Center. It's snowy, rainy outside, but the Terps were hot for a while inside. Maryland 61, the Rutgers Scarlet Knights 51, I'm Wayne Viner. Todd Carton, intern Mason. Guys, I'm going to start with Mason. What would you make of this one? Well, the quote that you gave first has been said way too many times today in this building. But it was a really slower game, especially in the first half into the beginning of the second half. Rutgers with 19 points still about the 18-minute mark in the second half. But at the end, Maryland let up a little bit, but then they pushed through, got the 10-point win. Todd Carton, what do you say? Yes, sir. Well, what I, saw, what I saw was a team that, that came out with a great burst of energy at the beginning of the second half, took a 12-point lead up to 20-plus, and then just went into what felt like a stall ball game and just pulled back, shift, downshifted into first gear. And I know you like to drive those manual yeah. transmissions. And suddenly, you know, it became a single-digit game at one point, and, it and it's, it's just absolutely baffling to me. I didn't think that Rutgers was going to catch up. Uh, I know it started to erode, but I didn't think that Rutgers was going to catch up. Turgeon has a play called where he wants to use the whole clock, and several times inside of four minutes they did. They didn't score every time, they being the Terps. Mason, uh, we talked to Delonte West there for a moment. He mentioned the transition defense was pretty good tonight. I thought Maryland's defensive effort was uh, way above average. It was, but again, we're going to talk about this moment where they went, if you want to call it first gear, adaptive cruise control, whatever, yeah. <laughs> they just slow down, and then they kind of stop playing for about 15 seconds, and then you go into automatic rush mode because... Next thing you know, there's 10 seconds left on the shot clock. You have to get a shot. And there was a stretch in the second half where, where I think Maryland must have turned the ball over on five or six possessions out right. of seven or eight. It was just, again, because they're going into that, that rush mode, there was one sequence near the end of the game where Morcel ran down a, an offensive rebound yes, in the did. corner. Turned and it then, immediately. And, no, and Cowan stood holding the ball for 20 oh, right. seconds at midcourt before he even moved. He just right. stood there like he was holding a watermelon. Uh, uh, Turgeon told him to stand there and hold on and to that ball, but Maryland holds on a 10-point win. It's their seventh conference win. They go to seven and nine. This is the Viner Four Gates postgame show. We will be back in Xfinity Center in a moment. Turp Talk is brought to you by Viner Four Gates Consulting. Call Viner Four Gates for all of your IT needs. In the D.C. Baltimore area, you could reach us at 301-251-2900 or on the web at www.vinerforgates.com. Center, where Maryland rolls by 10 over Rutgers. And next up for the Terps, a Monday visit to the Rosemont Horizon. Uh, and that was a spot of news today, Michigan State and Northwestern. And Maryland closes out the season on the 24th here against Michigan. I'm Wayne Viner, Todd Carton. In Hatless Germany. Todd Carton. Hatless. You might not recognize him without I didn't, the hat. I did not recognize Todd without the hat. Right. I, I was looking for him, so he was easier to find before the game. We talked on the radio that if Bruno Fernando could make a three, it, it would change a lot for his trajectory. And you know what? Maryland is now undefeated. When Bruno Fernando makes a three-point shot, it was the first one of his career. What would you make of that super night Bruno had? Well, Bruno, Bruno was just all over the inside in the paint. Uh, I, I, he probably had more than half of Maryland's rebounds tonight. Double-double uh, again. He, he was just, he was a man tonight. Mason, did you like that he finally took that three-pointer? Yes, I did, and it really makes it kind of a shame they didn't take that same shot in Lincoln, Nebraska. Almost a double-double in the first half. Ends it with around 13 points and nine boards. Uh, it's, what, what, he had eight in the first half. He yeah, has yeah. A, uh, we'll check the score sheet in a minute, but 18 points, including that three, a host of rebounds, and a defensive prowess. He had the block shots. He moves very well. Do you think he's getting better? I, I have to say yes. 
He stopped with the crazy dunks, which makes it look 10 times better. And as the season's gone on, the inside scoring game just looks so much improved. And 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 he's running the court. He had he had a put back on a layman shot in the first half after a steal. A herder shot. I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm thinking Jake Layman's here tonight. But the herder shot, the miss, and then running the floor on a fast break after a Cowan about, steal. As we say, right here, being right under the basket. And wow. and and you talk about his block shots. What yeah. what's great about his block shot is yeah. that he keeps it in play and he takes the rebound. He's not swatting it into the right. fifth row of the stand. Uh, he seems to almost know what he's doing. Mason pointed out two things he could work on. One was when you start to dribble into the middle to look to kick it out after you make your first move. Well, that's more as when you watch the games and he gets, he tries to score, but he's got his mind stuck on it. So he never kicks it back out. He's always looking to shoot when he gets the ball. Well, Maryland, who a team that has a lot of three shooters, they're standing there open when the double comes. They, they do, they are. Uh, Checo, not so much Checo, tonight. Checo had, an, Checo had an Obi-like night, picked up four fouls in ten minutes. Mm -hmm. And Tomajic took all of Obi minutes, all those Obi minutes gone to Tomajic. I think it's uh, interesting how we say Maryland doesn't have enough big men, but Obi or Tomajic, whichever night it is, they don't even see the floor. Well, Maryland changed the offense. It might have been a little late, but they actually changed the offense, and it seems to work. And Tomajic had a three tonight. Yep. Yeah. So Defensively, you can still see him get faked out a little bit, but hey, they're productive minutes. So you said on the radio on Wednesday night that Maryland might look like they're better, but it could be that the competition is a little less. You think that was tonight's case? I think so. I, you know, I mean, I, again, this is this is a team. You you have you have them down by 20 plus. You let them back in the game. This is this is a team Maryland should beat by 15 to 18 points, I think. And and again, if they're playing a Michigan State, Michigan State finishes that comeback, I think. All right. So let's talk about Michigan State for a moment, and then we'll uh, wrap this up. Michigan State was down by Mace. Was it 27? 27 today at Rosemont, where Maryland's heading to next. And 22 at the half and Northwestern then goes one for 18. And then they left the game tied just long enough for Northwestern to pick up a little bit of steam, but Michigan State too much at the end. Wow, the biggest comeback in the history of the Big Ten. Well, how do we think that's gonna affect Northwestern come Monday night? Uh, anymore, I don't know. We've talked about that nobody's really great. The most consistent team was Michigan State, and then turn around and you look at halftime, they're down by 27. Have to admit that I fell asleep before they finished the comeback, but I heard it was epic. And that Izzo said on the post game, what did he say about that program at He North said Western? Northwestern's building a program, but three things take that the coaching, they got it, the players, they've had it last year, but the fans did not show up. More Michigan State than Northwestern out there. But aren't they? They're playing out in that dump of an arena out in. You know, they improved it. It's near O'Hare. I've it's, been out there. The Rosemont Horizon. DePaul's. Oh, what the Rosemont the, Horizon. Okay. Right. I, I'm confusing it. that with a different arena. But right. Yeah. Uh, but they've improved that. There's some minor league hockey out there. It's not that bad. Could be better. Uh, highlights of the night we're seeing Mello and Jake on the court and a couple of Fernando dunks. What do you guys think? Uh, for me, for me again, it was it was, tonight was the Bruno Fernando show, and um, hopefully we'll we'll be around to see it again next year. But I hope so. <laughs> Mason, it's really nice to see the alumni here, but the product on the court from Bruno Fernando, those dunks. Now that they're going in the basket, mm. it's just great. It is. It was. It was a good night here. Uh, we will see you on the radio Wednesday night. Turp Talk is at 6 o'clock on 1300 CBS Sports Radio. Saturday morning, the Sports Maven at 9 a.m. And then back here as Michigan comes in for the last home game of the season. And we're planning our trip to New York City for the Big Ten Tournament. We'll see you multiple times from there. So from a happy Xfinity Center this Saturday night for intern Mason. Hatless, Todd Carton. This is Wayne Viner. We will see you on the radio. Good evening.